We can't predict the future, but we can learn how to make choices that shape the future we all want to be a part of. At the D School, we spend time helping students learn how to embrace their agency in order to bring about the future that we all are excited about, that we all want to be a part of, that is inclusive and that's representative of all of us. This is what it means to lead like a futurist. We spend our time teaching classes around creative confidence, helping students learn how to navigate ambiguity, how to learn from others, how to move between abstract and concrete, and how to communicate deliberately. This is what we call design. We often think of design as products, particularly technology products like an iPhone. These products enable experiences that allow us to do things beyond the product itself. Increasingly, these products are being enabled by technology that is getting increasingly more powerful by the data that we are creating and using every day. That requires systems to support it that ultimately has implications for all of us. We consider all of this design. If you find yourself making decisions somewhere on these different levels, then you are a designer. And because of the fast-paced nature of technology, it's making the world feel faster and faster. Change seems to be accelerating at an even more rapid pace. And I fundamentally believe that in a world filled with volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity, the world that we live in every day, leaders need to think of themselves more like designers than mechanics, being willing to imagine new ideas, bring those ideas to life, to test them, to get evidence if that's the right idea, or to change it if it's not, and to do it all over again. This is a very different world when we would have known answers to known problems that we would just repeat and scale. I believe that we are all capable of learning the skills to lead like a futurist. It starts first with learning how to see the future. How do we move beyond what is right in front of us and expand our realm of imagination? We have to learn how to imagine the unimaginable. So let's take an example of something that we know will be a part of our future near term and long term, driverless cars, a topic of hot debate and analysis these days. What is the impact of driverless cars? Well, let's take a look. Let's go from what we know to what we don't know. If there's more driverless cars, there's going to be less accidents. Less accidents lead to less fatalities. Less fatalities lead to less, perhaps, organs being available. And ultimately, that could lead to perhaps a black market, perhaps an opportunity to accelerate 3D printing of organs. We don't know. Another implication of driverless cars is reduced auto repair shops or the reduced risk of accidents, which we know the insurance company is looking at very, very closely. We can see other ramifications of driverless cars, enforcing the rules of the road, ultimately impacting the amount of tax revenue that we collect, or the need to stay awake. And if you're in the business of selling something that has caffeine, this is something that you are tracking pretty closely. We can also look at traffic flow going up, traffic speeds going up, ultimately faster short haul. And if you are in the business of regional flights or trains, you're going to be looking at this too. So there's lots of ways of taking something that's in plain sight and asking ourselves, what's the next consequence? And what could happen then? mapping out a whole range of possibilities, even ones that are far out in the future. Taking a central event and allowing yourself to expand the realm of possible. It allows us to take a signal, maybe a plant-based burger that we might have just seen as an experiment and wonder what could happen. And then be a little bit less surprised when we see that Burger King has taken it up and is now going nationally. Another thing we can do, once we've seen the landscape of possible futures, is to ask ourselves, how do we put investment in the future that we'd like to see come to life? How do we shape the future? One way is to look at the external driving forces and say, what is inevitable and what could we possibly influence to go towards a different future? One of the most inspiring examples I've seen of this in the last few years 
comes from an historic grant given by the MacArthur Foundation a few years ago in $100 million given to Sesame Street and the International Rescue Committee to create a new kind of education focused on helping children of the refugee crisis, a population often overlooked by humanitarian aid. So looking at this through the lens of the futurist, we could say, what do we know about children? Well, we know that they grow up. They don't stay children forever. What else do we know? We know that children that have been exposed to chronic stress have slower development than other children. We also know that education is vital to helping children become thriving members of their community. So with this in mind, Sesame Street took their 50-year history of creating programming for young children, not just for their ABCs, but also for their social and emotional literacy, and partnered with the IRC that had local resources on the ground that could deliver that education in ways that were connected to the community. This is what it means to shape the future. In February of this year, they actually launched called Alan Simsim, Welcome Sesame. They've even created new characters to represent this population, and they're shooting on location in order to make sure that the programs feel authentic to the community. At the D School, we're asking ourselves who shapes the future. We're asking how do we create empathy for the future? What is inevitable and what can we change? Just recently, I launched a new effort trying to help voters get back to the foundational principles of our Constitution in thinking about what they care about in our next US president. Reminding voters, particularly new voters, that we all have agency in the kind of leader that we'd like to see in that position. And instead of reacting to what the media wants us to believe, we all can do some thinking about the qualities and characteristics that we care about in order to shape the future we want to be a part of. So once we've seen the future, once we've identified the future we want to be a part of, how do we share that with others to get them excited? One of the most important things we could do is create narratives about the future, create stories that engage us emotionally. One of my favorite examples of this comes from Meredith Hutchinson and her project, Vision Not Victim. Meredith is a photographer that went to refugee camps to help children see a future for themselves that was different than their current environment and then have the ability to get others in their community on board to make that vision happen. So they would take pictures of children in their profession, which changed the conversation from when I grow up, I want to be, to I am a doctor. And I decided I wanted to be a doctor because what I experienced in my childhood. And because of that embodied narrative and the artifact that brought that narrative to life, it changed the conversation that these children would have with their parents and with their communities to help them make this vision come true. So instead of saying, well, then you shouldn't get married when you're 14, instead you should go to school so you could be the teacher that you want to be. In the class that I teach at the D School called Inventing the Future, we ask our students to create a debate 50 years in the future on the utopian and dystopian effects of emerging technologies. We've covered autonomous vehicles, AI doctors. In this picture, we see a dystopian team warning us about the potential downside of mining asteroids and what happens when our efforts unintentionally create more havoc back here on Earth. We're essentially rehearsing futures that we want to either create or avoid. And in the process, we're becoming more flexible, more resilient, more able to navigate all of the change that's coming our way and be more proactive in bringing about the change we'd like to see. How do I know this works? Because I've seen the kind of changes that our students experience from spending time thinking of themselves as futurists. Here's one example. I used to think I had no say in the future I will live. And now I think I have the necessary tools to shape it. Or I used to think that imagining the future was a gene intrinsic to people like talent. 
And now I think there are many valuable tools that anyone can practice. We can practice the things that we want to get better at. And I fundamentally believe we are all capable of leading like a futurist. Thank you very much.